we have actually come to the end of part one. Um, we've talked about what it means to be an ionic compound, what it means to have an ionic bond, and how we go about either writing out chemical formula for ionic compounds or writing out the names provided a formula. So I would like you guys to take a breather, see if you can't write down the formula or name for each of these following five ionic compounds. All right, so let's come back together and write out the either names or formulas for these ionic compounds. So if we're starting with SRBr2, I need to really make sure I don't just accidentally say the name. If we're starting with SRBr2, we can see that the metal here is an S block metal, which means we're following the main block metal rule. We're just gonna write out the cation's name, which is strontium. And the anion, we're gonna write out its name, we're gonna drop the suffix and add IDE, which turns the name bromine into bromide. So the name for this ionic formula is strontium bromide. All right, next we have beryllium nitride. Because we are not told explicitly what the charges on these ions are, we're gonna have to look at their uh, electron configurations and figure it out. So beryllium, uh, where it is on the periodic table, let's see, I'll write it right down here, has an electron configuration of He2S2, and our nitrogen, has an electron configuration of He2S2, 2P3. All right, so the beryllium, it's gonna be easiest for it to gain a charge, to gain its uh, noble gas configuration if we just lose these 2S2 electrons. That's gonna give a two plus charge to the beryllium. And our nitrogen has a total of five valence electrons. Since it's over halfway to gaining, uh, or over halfway to a total of eight, it's gonna be easier for it to just gain three electrons. These three electrons are gonna come from the beryllium's as they begin losing electrons, the nitrogen will pick them all up. Each individual nitrogen though is gonna be easier, or uh, the most stable if it has a three minus charge. In doing so, our beryllium will be left with a helium core configuration, and our nitrogen will be left with a neon core configuration. Now that we know what the charge on the beryllium and the nitrogens are though, we're gonna have to put an equal, or not an equal number, an appropriate number of the ions together to make sure that our uh, compound is charge neutral. So a beryllium with a two plus charge at first is just going to be partnered with a single nitrogen with a three minus charge. We can see that we have too many negative charges, right? We are not charged balance. So we're gonna to have to add another beryllium with a two plus charge. Well, this brings our total positive charges, total number of positive charges up to a plus four, uh, meaning that we have too many <laughs> positive charges now. So we're gonna to have to add a single additional nitrogen with a negative three. And it would appear at this point that our charges are still not balanced. We are at beryllium with a total of a four plus, nitrogen with a total of a six minus. So we're just gonna add another beryllium. Now we have a total of six positive charges across all of our beryllium's, six negative charges across all of our nitrogens. And if we were to put all of this together, we would be left with beryllium three, since there are three beryllium's present here, nitrogen two. Be3, N2. All right, aluminum iodide, we can follow a similar approach. Um, I will leave the electron configuration determination up to the viewer, um, but our aluminum is the most stable with a plus three charge, and our iodide is the most stable with a minus one charge. So cations, you notice, tend to be listed first, um, and the anion tends to be listed second, and this is true in nearly every ionic compound that I can think of, especially at the general chemistry level. So our aluminum has a plus three, iodide has a minus one, meaning that we're going to put one aluminum together with three separate iodides. This is gonna make sure that we have a total of a negative three charge to balance out all three of those positives coming from the aluminum. All right, we're in the home stretch, our last two, SNS2. If we want to name this, uh, 
if we want to name this compound, first and foremost, tin is a heavy metal, meaning that it actually has multiple possible ionic charges. Because it's a heavy metal, we're gonna have to follow the second set of rules for naming this species. We're gonna have to know what its charge is in order to name it uh, appropriately. Well, sulfur is an element, much like oxygen, that is going to have a consistent ionic charge, a consistent anionic charge. Each sulfur is the most stable with a minus two charge. And there are two of them present inside of this compound. So there's a total of a minus four charge that the cations in combination are going to have to balance out. We can see that we only have one cation present though. It's not SN2, it's not SN3, it's just a single SN, which means this tin is going to have to have a plus four charge in order to balance out all of the negative charge that's coming from the sulfur. So now that we know what the charge on our tin is, we can name this compound. It is a tin four, right? Because again, we have to write the charge in Roman numerals here, according to our naming convention. Our tin four is gonna be the cation and the anion is going to be sulfide, right? Because again, sulfur, we drop the suffix, we add an IDE. Last but not least, we are working uh, or charged with naming tin two oxide. Here exactly we can see an example of two stable charges on tin. The first has a plus four charge, the second has a plus two charge. So if we take our tin with a plus two charge, combine it with an oxygen, that again, we have seen a couple of examples now. Oxygen is the most stable in its ionic form if it has a minus two charge. These two things, when partnered together, are going to create charge balance. And this is going to mean that the chemical formula for this compound is going to be SN for tin, O. SNO, or snow. <laughs>